Hi, Merlin of Wizard Airsoft Customs here. Since we all seem to have a bit of spare time on our hands nowadays, Mike of PewHub has asked me to quickly throw together a little uh, demonstration video of how to do your basic uh, sort of post-game clean on your gas blowback pistol. Uh, we'll also include a few uh, things to look out for, it's like a health check to you know, help ensure that your equipment stays working when you want it to. What I'll be demonstrating on today is a uh, Tokyo Maria based uh, high capper slash 1911. Um, well there are obviously specific things between all pistols, what I'm going to show you today is generally applicable to all, all uh, airsoft handguns of the gas blowback variety. It's just things like uh, your specific bits like how to take out certain parts and, uh, and the uh, specific takedown will also be unique to your gun. However, cleaning and what to look for, generally all the same. So without further ado, here is my pistol. Uh, said it is a TM spec. Uh, it is a highly, highly, highly modified uh, Tokyo Marui um, high capper. Uh, there's very little of the, the uh, original parts remaining. Uh, this is uh, one I built and use for a uh, competition shooting. Uh, if you want to know more about this gun or anything else like it, feel free to go ahead, go to my um, Facebook page and have a look. So, aside from your gun, what else are you going to need? Uh, you're going to need a toothbrush, preferably one you're not going to stick in your mouth later. Possibly some uh, paper towel. A microfiber cloth, it's a cheap thing, helps. We'll also need something to remove all the old uh, grease and oil. I like to use um, isopropyl alcohol or otherwise known as isopropanol or rubbing alcohol. Um, you can get this pretty cheap on Amazon um, in like gallon quantities. Really useful stuff, I recommend it. Failing that you can just use uh, standard airsoft silicon lubricant spray. Uh, you'll also need obviously the lubrication component. Uh, so uh, silicon oil is basically what you're going to use for everything. Uh, I personally like for lubrication purposes the um, slightly thicker small bottles of the stuff you can get, like a, like a dripper bottle. Uh, the thicker stuff um, come in this form, uh, you can apply more discriminately and it doesn't tend to go everywhere whereas the spray stuff is a little thin, goes everywhere. Um, I'm not a big fan of it. Incidentally, these little bottles tend to be uh, cheaper as well. Uh, this stuff is the pure silicone oil which you'd use for remote control car shock absorbers. Uh, the other thing you will need a little bit of is silicone grease. Um, looks like Vaseline. Yeah, it's useful for a um, um, for the actual sealing components of your uh, gun, but you'll that'll be clearer later on. All right, so let's begin. First, you fill strip your pistol. So this may be unique for yours, but for a high cap or a 1911, you sure the magazine is moved. Draw the slide back so that the takedown notch is lined up. So that all guns can be a bit fiddly. Hold it in for this one, hold it in place, and pop out your slide stop pin. So you can just remove side, take off your top slide. So for a sort of quick post game clean and not a deep clean, uh, you are not going to need to take this apart. I'd highly advise you don't do it unless you know what you're doing or are happy to accept that it may go back together again in a non-functioning state. However, for your day-to-day -day maintenance stuff, it's all going to be in the uh, top part which contains most of the working parts. So that's Karen Field Strip. Remove your guide rod. So in this particular example it's a, uh, a bit difficult due to the parts I've chosen and the way I've built it. And uh, be careful not to let it launch across the room, it will, the guide rod will want to go disappearing. So your guide rod, decoil spring, guide rod plug, and then slide your barrel assembly out the front of the gun like that. 
So for 1911 you've got all the fun games of uh, removing the barrel bushing and stuff first, but it's still largely the same. Take a hockey unit outside of out of your um out of your outer barrel. And that's it, basically fill stripped. From here, uh, you can just go ahead and clean and generally all the clean most of the cleans you're gonna to want to do after each game day it doesn't need to go any further than that. Uh, once in a while it's uh, usually a good idea to remove your blowback housing and nozzle, give it a clean in there and clean up the nozzle and give that all lubrication. We'll get on to that one shortly. So start with the small parts. Take your toothbrush, dip it in your isopropyl alcohol and just give everything an external scrub. got threads you can get in there and give them a good go. The other thing that will be useful to have to hand is some uh, cotton q-tips. Useful for getting into hard to reach places and getting into threads and things like that. So I like to use isopropyl because it does a pretty good job of breaking down uh, oil and detritus and grit and stuff like that without damaging rubber parts. Uh, it also has the added benefit of it uh, tends to evaporate quickly makes life a lot easier. If you're using um, if you're using a silicone spray just as like a degreaser, uh, you do need to do a pretty good job of going over and removing it with a cloth. So go off with your, with your cloth and just remove all the excess. So I'm just going to do this quickly, as quick dirty clean, but you can take your time doing all this and do a decent job of it. So just doing all the external parts, Like that. Uh, while you're doing the hop unit, it's always a good chance to. Uh, well, hop units are pretty robust, they tend to last for ages. This one certainly will, it's a uh, solid brass one. But you'll find the thing that tends to eventually start uh, starts breaking them. You'll usually get this uh, segment here, usually start to crack after a while and break away. So it's a good time to check you haven't got any cracks or anything developing because if that does crack inside your gun it's a bit of a pain to remove. So you can use your Q-tips to get into all the uh, recesses and difficult reach parts. Same for all the other bits. Guide rod. And spring. Give it a scrub over. Then you just rotate it in your cloth to remove any detritus. Guide rod plug, just Q tip. Get in there. That's done. Put those aside. The other thing you're going to need um, is a cleaning rod. Your gun should hopefully come with one. If you don't have one, talk to your friendly local air shop, shop, or, shop or site. The odds are they've probably got quite a few knocking around that you can acquire. Cleaning out the inside of your inner barrel. It's generally the thing that would get filthiest. Uh, uh, mine currently doesn't actually look too bad, but still for the purpose of demonstration. You want to make sure your hop is wound all the way off. Want to get a paper towel? I'm going to tear off a little strip, a few centimeters long. You don't want it too long, otherwise it's going to be too thick to fit down your barrel ball. Thread it through your cleaning rod and twist it around itself. Dip it in your isopropyl. And from the front, from the front, up from the back, simply run it through, giving it a gentle twist, and stopping just as the uh, tip of the rod pokes out the other end. Now the important thing is you have to have your hop off. If you have your hop on, you could damage your bucking. So ream through. 
pull through with the wet one. Dispose of that. Tear off a, another piece, about the same length, dry. And run that back through. Uh, you may need to repeat this a couple of times, but that should do for now. And the last bit is get another Q-tip, soaking our isopropyl. Uh, next bit we need to do is just clean the uh, feed ramp and things like that uh, for the um, hop unit as well as the bucking itself. Of course, uh, you also have the uh, you also have the option of taking apart your hop unit completely and clean everything in separate bits, uh, which is fine, generally a good idea uh, if you know what you're doing and are confident that you can put the uh, hop unit and bucking back correctly. Otherwise, just for a quick post-game clean, just need to run the barrel through and that's it. So getting that ramp, getting the uh, hole where the nozzle um, feed, uh, feed peg uh, recesses into, that will usually collect detritus. Uh, if that gets properly filled up with gunk, um, you have to pick it out. Or at worst case, take apart your hop unit and clean it while it's in two halves. Let's get in there, get the rubber, clean off your contact patch, then go to the dry side of your Q-tip and just remove any of that excess. So isopropyl is great because it doesn't really damage your bucking. Now, because the bucking is a rubber component, it does, in theory, need to be lubricated to keep it sort of healthy, though you don't want to generally over lubricate it. However, if you're using um, using green gas or HFC 144A or whatever, that, that will tends to have lubrication built into it and will generally keep that healthy. You just need to keep it clean uh, and it will lubricate itself for use. Using dry stuff like uh, CO2 or HPA or something, you'll need to look to actually like uh, lubricating your hop up buckings every now and then. But if you're one of those users, hopefully you know what you're doing with it. So it's most of those ancillary parts done. Let's give the frame a good, a quick go over before we move on to the uh, slide itself. So let's take your frame. So we're not going to be taking part. Don't need to take part, and I don't recommend taking part. Uh, but for your post-game clean, it's really just superficial bits and the uh, rails and stuff where all the uh, gunk and grime collects. Let's get your isopropyl and toothbrush. Give it a good scrub out paying particular attention to the rails. Down the magwell as well, be surprised how much stuff gets down there. Use a Q-tip to get into the uh, hard to reach spots. Yeah, see how much dirt collects in, in the rails. Once you're happy, get your cloth and give it a work over. And so you can also do the externals of your gun with the just toothbrush and isopropyl on the cloth. So I'm just going to skip this for brevity. And put that aside and any remaining isopropyl will just evaporate away. So the next bit, the slide, which should only really uh, can, should only contain your uh, blowback housing and nozzle. So you can just go ahead and give it a scrub out as it is now with your isopropyl and stuff like that to uh, get into it and get into all the uh, rail recesses and all the hard to reach spots. Um, once in a while, uh, it's a it's worth taking out your blowback unit and nozzle housing uh, to give that a uh, good clean, which I'll uh, quickly show you how to do. So yeah, on to removing the uh, blowback unit. So on a TM spec guns. The only thing that's actually holding the um, holding the uh, blowback unit in is a this screw here on the back. Uh, occasionally, there, depending on what sights you've got, occasionally there is a screw which uh, holds it in from the uh, from the top. That's usually on the uh, fixed style sights you get on 1911s. So what you do? Simply remove the screw holding back the blowback unit in. Put 
for that side. Do not lose this. Yeah, so you can give it a clean out and um, before you put it back in, it's sometimes worth using a little bit of blue Loctite as well. Now, um, now there's nothing physically holding the blowback unit in. For most metal, uh, metal, uh, metal slides, uh, with that screw out, you can simply take the front and the rear corner here of the blowback unit and it will simply just and it will simply just uh, drop out. It's generally a good idea to do it in that orientation because you've got this tiny nozzle return spring here which you definitely do not want to lose. Put this aside for a second. If you have an actual Tokimori with a plastic slide uh, the same principle applies, however, there is some degree of gentle persuasion required because the plastic is actually bent and clipped around the blowback unit. So you take off your screw as per usual. Uh, there would normally be a sight on there, you'd leave the sight would stay on first. To actually remove it, uh, you need to actually pry apart the uh, plastic. If you're not sure I'm doing this, don't bother doing it. It is feels kind of unpleasant when you first do it and when you very first do it on that pistol it'll be quite difficult but you'd part the um you stretch out the plastic like that a little bit of the frame and push down on the front of the nozzle and, you know, and it will start levering its way out as you can see try and keep it vertical so you don't lose that uh spring uh, and to uh, put it back in, try and keep it vertical. You tow the back in first, try and get as close to where it's supposed to be, and then you lever up from the front. And just give it a push and click. You may need to part it again and push it around, make sure it all clips in, and then just check that. The uh, blowback unit lies flush with the uh, where the rails actually are, so it's a lot easier on um, metal uh, metal slides than the plastic ones. So now your slide's empty, uh, your sights may easily just slip out. It's fine, you can take it off, clean it, put it back in. Uh, these ones uh, do have lock screws in it because it's a slightly fancier sight unit. Take your slide. Just getting there the toothbrush as as we did for the other parts. Give it a scrub out. Again, hard to reach spaces, use a uh, Q tip. So I'm just gonna do this quickly for demonstration and do a proper job on it. give it all a wipe down afterwards. So don't worry if the externals get a bit grubby, you can always just clean and fettle away afterwards once the guns are reassembled. <coughs> Put that side for to let it dry. So back to your blowback unit. So you want to remove the remove your nozzle return spring. Do not lose that. This is also a good opportunity to um, while you've gotten this these parts to just check the health of it. Uh, these things fail quite regularly, um, they're teeny little springs, they're there to provide pressure so when the gun fires the nozzle re uh, it springs the uh, nozzle back ready to be ready to collect the next BB. So these are fairly fragile, fortunately they're fairly cheap and it's just a fact of life that in all gas blowback guns these usually get munched and that's the it's quite a common failure, uh, but they are cheap, you can get lots of them. Just check it isn't kinked, check it isn't knotted, check it's straight. Otherwise, not much to do, you can give it a clean off if you want, if it's uh, filthy. Uh, take your nozzle out, draw it to the forward position, and then just tilt it out, basically. Uh, yep, so again, just take a toothbrush too your blowback unit. Uh, other things to look out for while you're here 
uh, check the health of your um, uh, o-ring seal or uh, some guns will have like a rubber cup just make sure that there isn't dry, cracked, um, shrunken, swollen, anything like that yeah, it's obvious signs of like physical damage uh, you can usually you can usually take these out I'm not going to do that here, uh, here but you can just simply unscrew it lever it out give it a good clean away you go uh, so I'm not going to do it for the sake of brevity in this video this then it's only held on by just one screw at the front last one's clean the nozzle I don't advise taking this apart any further if it's working there's really no need to take uh, the internals of the nozzle out ever also a good time to check it for damage um, any cracking that will occur around here any cracking in the body um, quite often uh, going horizontally and checking the health of this little uh, this little tab here this little tab is actually what pushes the BB out of the magazine and then off into the uh, off into the um, off into the uh, hop chamber so make sure it uh, hasn't rounded off too much and hasn't snapped or anything like that. Generally one of the main, uh, quite a common culprit for misfeeds, things like that. So nozzles are fairly consumable items, they don't last forever. Some last better than others, but treat it like a semi-consumable and expect to replace it every now and then. Uh, isopropyl, just give the inside of that barrel a swirl around. Q-tip out the excess. Okay, last thing, reassembling lubrication. So while I'm in this state, it's where we want to use our isopropyl, no, sorry, uh, silicon grease. So I'm going to take the teeniest, tiniest dab, just put a really thin film on the sort of inside of the um, nozzle there. You're not, unless you've got the smallest finger, you ain't gonna reach all the way down. So basically do it around the inside of the entrance of it and the, uh, put the action of slotting it back into the uh, blowback housing will uh, lubricate further than that. Uh, for lubrication of your blowback housing before you put it back in. Delicately, you wanna take off the piston head. Um, it's not really necessary. Put a little drop on the o-ring there, give it a blow and it'll work its way in there eventually, it'll work its way in there eventually anyway, so you can put together your blowback assembly again, Just lever it in, make sure this detent lines up with that groove, push in, make sure it moves freely. Yep, this all fits together surprisingly nicely. Um, sometimes uh, most most guns, the uh, it will uh, there will be a bit of a catch point here anyway, um, which may necessitate uh, filing parts of your BBU. But if your gun works already from a known working state, you shouldn't need to do that. Um, you don't need to drown the spring and lube. Um, probably just residual lubrication that's pretty stuck in your fingers. Doing all that is more than enough. Put it back into your blowback housing. On the high caps and 911s, you notice one end is very different to the other on the spring. Make sure the bunched up end goes to the rear of the blowback unit. You can then go to reassemble. Keep it in the upright orientation, otherwise the little springs can go running every single time and it's going to be a pain in the butt if you get it halfway in there and the spring falls out, you jam it in the rest of the way, you're prone to damage that spring. So keep it vertical. It should simply slot back in nicely. There we go. Make sure everything's flush where it should be. The blowback unit lines up nicely with the uh, rails. Then you can uh, put your blowback housing screw back in. Now you don't need to do this up with an immense amount of torque. 
so don't overdo it. As I said it is, can help to um, put a bit of blue thread lock on that screw just to make sure it doesn't go anywhere. Now to lubricate the uh, slide. So you, what you want is lubrication in the right place, you don't want to just spray away with a silicone spray. Um, having lots of oil does attract dirt and if you Attracting dirt just leads to uh, grind, um, grinding um, in when you work the action and things like that. It just can make your life difficult. So, hop a little in the uh, rail from the rear. Get a fresh Q-tip and uh, give it a push round. Drop in the middle. And you can just use a Q-tip just to spread that around. This is by playing the excess. All right, moving on. Not much lubrication for the hop unit, as uh, as I mentioned before. I said the bucking should lubricate itself once if you're using green gas. So you can put your hop unit back onto your outer barrel. Uh, if you have a plastic marui, you will need to lever this bit on your plastic or outer barrel to make sure it goes in, but if you've got metal ones, generally not a problem. Slide that back in from the front. Make sure it seats properly with your bucking. Great. Guide rod. A bit of lubrication on the rod itself. Spring back on. Recoil rod guide back on, and you can put it back in your gun. Put it back in. Draw the uh, plug to the rear, and just inject it in like that. Should be a lot easier in uh, most guns, rather than this one, because of the choice of parts and funky bits I put in there. That was to say, weird two-stage rod I've gotten. You shouldn't have that in uh, most off-the-shelf guns. And that's the uh, top reassembled, relubing the bottom. So not much to uh, really do here. The only thing you need to re-lube is rails. Little drop in there. Little drop in there. Push it through with a Q-tip. Put some of the excess on top like that. A little bit of the excess. A little bit of the excess on the uh, top front of the frame. Doesn't hurt to have a little dab on these little detents here. So these are um, the important detents, they're the things that do things like disconnect the trigger and uh, turn off the gas and things like that, and they do basically all work by frictionless slide cycles. So a little bit of lubrication there is always good. And you can put it all back together again. Back together. Bring your slide halfway back and hold it so the takedown notch is lined up with um, where the back of the stop will go. We notice on slide stop, just here, there's a there's the little detent needs to be lined up with that hole. Push it back in, let go. Let it slide a few times, and you can just wipe off the uh, any oil you may have got on the outside or anything like that. There you go, one clean pistol. Do a quick function check. So, cock the gun, hammer sticks back, great. Fires, great. Now, cocking it, firing holding the trigger, cocking it, laying it forward, still holding the trigger, hammer still stays back. Let the trigger forward, hit reset, hammer, great. Everything is working wonderfully. And that is about it. That's all a uh, sort of post game clean entails. So it doesn't take long. Now's a great time to do it with all your guns, considering, like, you know, we're not exactly out there playing anymore. So, either way, uh, thanks for, uh, thanks for uh, watching and um, 
you have any questions to me directly or want to ask about any of the work I do or any of the pistols, parts, uh, sort of any uh, tips and tricks or what you might want to do to improve various aspects of performance, have a look at my um, have a look on my uh, Facebook page, which should be linked in the uh, down below.